Hello, well I'm making the front legs at the moment for the Sussex chair. I split out some stock from the logs as you saw in one of the earlier videos and what I'm doing now I'm draw knifing them down to size on my shave horse. The shave horse is great, it's like a foot operated clamp and you really can hold the wood nice and firm and well being green wood it cuts so easily with a draw knife. So I've got a little draw knife here, it's not a particularly large one. This is actually one marked um, Robert Sorby 1941. <laughs> so, but you can take off quite large sections of wood quite easily with a draw knife. And what I'm doing is I'm basically getting it down to size, roughly down to sort of dimension. I'll then put it through my rotary planes. You, you could do the whole operation with the draw knife only and using spoke shaves. So if you didn't, didn't want to use rotary planes, as you saw with the chair stretchers, that would work fine. So just taking a few of these down, as you can see, it slices off quite easily. I sort of try and look down the leg as I do it to get it as straight as I can. And um, that just really makes it easier. Twist it round, again, foot operated vice, and it holds it really well. People sort of ask with draw knives, oh, you know, that's a leafly sharp blade, and it is, it is sharp. Aren't you going to sort of cut yourself, cut your knee or something awful? But actually, you don't, because you're sort of with it, you see it, and it goes quite well. With lovely, clean cuts there. I sharpen these on water wheels, which I find great, and then I often just rub an old stone up and down to give them a little bit more polish and a bit of leather stropping, and that gets it nice and sharp. What you can do, I use this bevel up. What you can do is use it bevel down if you want to do slightly more controlled cuts takes off slightly more delicate shaving. And that's worth knowing if you're doing thing, finer things like chair spindles. Anyway, I'll carry on doing this leg, get it down a bit, and then I'm going to use the rotary plane to get it into a cylinder. And then I've got the interesting thought of how do I turn the tops, because they have little button turnings on the tops. So I need to have a little think about that one. <laughs> to get this leg into my chuck, of my turning engine head. I'm just taking it down a little bit by hand. You can work these rotary planes by hand and they're perfectly okay, it just takes longer. So I'm just gonna fix this into the chuck. I have my little grub screw, which I think will probably be enough to hold that in, just tightens this time against the wood. Get it set A little bit rough on the surface, that really doesn't matter because I'm going to be taking it down a little bit more and I'll be putting my um, trapping plane on it. Well the front legs of the Sussex chair are an inch and a half at the top and they actually taper down to as low as, I'm just reading off my drawings here, about an inch at the base. So it goes down roughly inch and a half, inch and a quarter, inch. So I'm going to need to do a bit of tapering down. I really am at the limit here of what my trapping plane can manage. I'm just going to check my measurements now. The leg should be about 18 
inches long at the front. It's got the socket into the seat. So I want it to be about an inch at the tip. Actually, that, that is fine, that is spot on. Hopefully about an inch and a quarter there. Which again is, yep, that's fine, that's spot on. And then an inch and a half at its top. And actually, yep, that also, I'm lucky here. Things are working out well today. That, that's gone fine. That's of the required length as well. My little photo drawing sketches here show the front chair legs and you can see here that the, the front legs are jointed with little spigots onto little wooden blocks which then the cross stretchers for the seat joint into the sides of. What I'm going to do here is make the top spigots, so a little wooden spigot to go on the top of the chair leg, the front leg, so it goes into the blocks of wood between the seat stretchers. And to do this, I'm going to first of all put a bevel on the top. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can get one of my rather primitive auger tools over the spigot and start cutting a square shouldered spigot using this primitive tool that I've got and a bracing bit. So I'm just taking that down bit there, a little bit further to go. So I'm just turning this by hand using my trapping plane and it's at a bit of an angle. To um, get it to work. So nearly there, a little bit more to take off, not much now. And then I can get my hollow auger type tool on the job. Now I, you can pick these hollow auger tools which I'm going to use in a minute. You pick them up from antique markets and such like from time to time. I'll just show you what it's about. It's um, essentially got a hole there, which the wood can go up, two cutting blades set at an angle. So you go around there and you just put it in a standard bracing bit. So what I want to do is nearly there I've got to take a little bit more off with my trapping plane so that it fits the hole. And a little bit more quite hard work turning this by hand without having the machine. It does the same job, I mean it's... that would be enough. So I pop this in the vise, trying to keep it as upright as possible. Make sure my auger bit doesn't fall off so I'll just tighten it on the brace. There we are. So now I'm going to place that over the hole, try and keep it as straight as possible and start turning. And what one gets is a nice little spigot. So I'll go a little bit further. I can always trim this spigot to length. The idea is it's giving me a square shouldered spigot. There we are. Right, that's exactly what I wanted. I will just, that's quite nicely centered as well actually. So there you are, one spigot. And I'll just, because I want that shoulder top edge to taper in very slightly, I'll just do one more little rotation with my trapping plane and that's given me a little bit of rounded taper. So that will now sink into a plank of wood on the corner of the chair seat, which is exactly what I wanted. If I do need to take that diameter down some more, I have a smaller one as well, but I'm not going to at the moment. It's fair if I need it. In fact, I think I've probably got a couple more of different sizes of these 
so I can always get them out if need be. Okay, so that's a couple of spigots. Well, I've now trimmed the front legs to length and I've just rounded off the bottoms so they don't chip and they go across the floor. So spigots also just cut down to length. So that's my front legs completed. And, um, well, the next video will probably be the rear legs, but time will tell exactly what it is. I'm doing this bit by bit, so we'll see. <laughs> anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this one.